Hi everyone and welcome to another Facehammer show. In this show I'm going to be talking about a Flesh Eater Quartz army list. Um, hopefully you guys have got your army box sets now um, and you'll be starting to think about how you're going to make your army list or what you're going to be doing. Um, so I thought I'd wait until kind of people have got their hands on the on the book and stuff before I went, went into too much detail. Um, I did do a full book review, you can check that out, there'll be a, a link to it here or you can hopefully you've already seen it um so i'll talk about an army list now this show i'm going to do an army list that is kind of an all-rounder list i would start with um i haven't played any games of it so it's my kind of first stab at a list that i would probably take um and there's will be a lot of stuff in the list which are optional things you can change um so the idea is a starting point and then you can play a couple of games you can like swap bits in and out and decide on your direction of where you want to go with your army list and also um items and formations and things like that is uh i don't think there's not like a right or wrong so i'm not trying to tell you this is the list i'm just saying this is a list that i would run and here are some options and things you could do differently so here's the list um this is hollow morn um this makes crypt horrors battle line and also gives you plus one damage on knights on the charge. That will be the Crypt Horrors and the Morbeg Knights, not their mounts. Um, now, these these can be swapped around. So if you were like, actually, I don't want, haven't got that many knights, you could put unit flayers in instead. You could have six flayers as a unit if you really wanted to. You're going to have to look, then probably drop the Crypt Guard out, put in, um, you know, another unit of crypt horrors you could bump the crypt horrors up to nine there's lots of options here now i'm not dictating i'm not saying this is the optional for that you go i just like more beg knights i think they're cool um i think if you finish those I, I would probably want more crypt horrors in the unit to be honest um i just was running out of points now the gore warden makes the knights battle line he does feel like a little bit of a tax um i don't think he's that good i think there's a lot of restrictions around his abilities i think on paper he looks great and then in practice, he's not so good. Um, but anyway, so the Abhorrent on Royal Terror, guys. Now, this is a swappable option. So you could go for a Zombie Dragon. You could also go for a Zoran um, instead. He's 460. It's basically a straight swap. You've got some points left over. You can swap around some bits and bobs, you know, like 10 points here or there ain't going to break the list. Um, now, there's also different builds for the Terror Guys. Now, you can go for what I've done is a, a resilient one. So you can take the heal is 2d3, and then I've given in the Blood River Chalice so I can heal 2d3 in my opponent's hero phase, making him quite hard to kill in Norwana. He has only got a 4-up save, but if you get the 5-up ward on him from the Prayer from the Vargulf, which I'll talk about in a minute, and, and you think Vargulf, you said they were rubbish. I'll talk about that. And also, um, you can put, obviously, like, Mystic Shield. And you've got All Out Defense. You've got Best Day Ever. So it's like, that. he's not that squishy. He's got 16 wounds, so he's fairly resilient. Now, the other option is you can just go max offense. You can go plus one attack, and you can give him the Heart of the Gargan to pop it for another attack. So that's going to be, like, five attacks on the mount. If you get the spell off to get re-rolls, that's five attacks re-rolling. I think if you've got Feeding Friends, you get another attack. So you could be up to six attacks re-rolling. Um, bites to fish for mortal wounds, so he just flies out, hits something you want to kill. You throw your dice, mm -hmm. so then you probably die on the return. Um, maybe. You can also go for retreat and charge to do some funky stuff like putting him in the pocket behind the crypt horrors. The crypt horrors gets charged. You can attack over the top because his more is a three inch reach. Then you could retreat out and charge their back line. So you could be a little bit more tricksy if you wanted to. Um, I just think he's great. You could also go Grim Garland uh, and that allows you to do bravery shenanigans with screaming. That's a battle tactic. Um, if you scream something to death, um, you can also use the Gore Warden to um, redeploy this guy because as long as the Gore Warden's within, hold within nine, um, sorry, the, the Terror Ghost hold within nine of the Gore Warden, I should say, then the Gore Warden can cast his spell. You can pick them up, drop them down somewhere else, nine away, and they can go for their, their little charge. If you've taken the uh, crusading army there'll be plus one to charge um so it's on an eight it's pretty reliable um for a charge and then that could be quite clutch because you could end up in their back lines you know it's just a threat they have to think about the whole game and it's a spell they have to stop which then 
you know, if you've taken the um, Andorian Acolyte or Antorian, however you say it, uh, formation, which I think you should in this army, then that gives you um, probably more uh, what I like to call bullshit magic dice to force through the spell because you can just use those to bump the spell you really need. Um, so you should be able to get it off in the situation you need, and obviously then they've you've got the more spell that they probably got to stop as well, and they don't want to. There's a lot of magic coming at you, so I think in the current handbook, you really need to take the Andoria Locus, and I think you can't worry about being a one drop. And I think you also then need to um, take Warlord for an extra artifact. Um, so that's what I would do. Um, I think if you're constantly feeling you need, you're getting out dropped and and hammered, um, then you need to readdress that. But I think the army's fairly resilient. If you set up with your defensive line, you've got your character protection from the crypt guard, um, which I'll get onto. But anyway, so the terror geist is whatever you want him to be, whatever role. After a couple of games, depending on what you play in your meta. Maybe you think, oh, the scream's really good. I'm going to take that every time. Maybe you go, actually, I want the mortal wound to, because I'm always facing those big nasty heroes with a good armor save. So I just want to, I need to go out and kill it. I need to have that threat the whole game. Um, it's a bit desperation, but it can work. Or you just want some sustain and you just want to grind on your objectives. Um, I, I went for sustain. I don't, I don't think any of them are bad. Um, I think after a couple of games, you'll know what, army units you take and how you play what one you'd want more um i probably would end up switching this out after a few games and going for the more damage uh, and protect myself through just just screening and movement um because it's quite fast you know it's not a slow model it's 14 inch fly so um and i've gone for grand justice gourmet now gourmet i think an auto include i think he's he's going to be in every army He's 140 points. Now, although he's not a wizard, he is exceptionally cool because um, he gets this nice little... Let me get his war scroll up. Uh, this little ability, which I think is is just great. So he gets these, these like... They're not prayers, but they could be. You know, these this pronounced judgment thing. So you pick one of the judgments... Um, then you basically roll a dice and on a free plus you get plus one to wound or you get a run and charge against that target um and actually that can be quite good because although you have to finish within half an inch of that unit the rest of the models in your unit could be within range of other things to fight you don't have to fight that unit um then obviously you've got here that you get plus one hit rolls for um uh, flesh of course units target so you've got plus one to hit plus one to wound run and charge and you've also got this one if someone kills an abhorrent um you're gonna get plus one damage so if someone kills your i don't know one of your heroes or your or your terror guys then you can use this to counter charge with your more big knights and there's a lot of damage coming up so i think for his points he he's just great because it's a not a, something you can stop. A free up's very fairly reliable. It gives you turn one threat of a run and charge if you really want to use it. Um, uh, yeah, I just I just think he'll be in your list. Uh, he's a nice hero to to use for a battle tactic as well. Um, if you need to use, I think it's a I don't think it's a courtier actually, but um, you need to have like one of each type of thing on an objective. Um, but anyway, he's he's pretty cool. Um, he's not gonna get many points for for the feeding frenzy and stuff because it getting to six is gonna be difficult because he's not gonna do much damage. He doesn't prayer, he doesn't cast. So the only way you're gonna do it is with either being in the throne or using a heroic actions, but I think you're gonna be using them on your Vargulf um and also your um Arch Regent to get up to speed. You might end up thinking I don't need the run and charge. It's not the way I'm playing. Um, but I just think the buffs are too good. They're too efficient not to take them. And that's all he is, a buff piece. He's not there to generate um, feeding frenzy or do anything like that. But, I mean, he could do, but it's very unlikely. So, yeah, I would I would say it's, uh, it's 
it's less than likely. Okay, um, but that's why he's there. Now, the Arch Regent, I think the Arch Regent is probably the best hero in the army. Um, and it's because, and this is something I missed when I did the review, which is quite a big thing to miss, to be fair, so I do apologise for that. Um, the <laughs> the the courtiers can only, only ones that can bring models back. So if you've got a unit you want to add models to, you can't do it with an abhorrent. You can only bring units back on. Now, the difference with the Arch Regent is they get an ability called Countless Servants, which is start of your hero phase. You can return up to three slain models to a surf unit or one model to a knight unit that's within 18. Now, 18 is a huge range, um, and it's a guarant it doesn't cost you any feed and frenzy points. It's great. He's also a two-cast wizard. Now, his spell uh, Carrion Call means that if you set up a flesh a court unit um, at the end of your movement phase, it can immediately move D6 inches. So actually it sounds like, well, okay, whatever, but actually it's quite good because if you're going to spend your points on summoning a unit, then you know that you might have, you're basically getting a 3D6 charge rather than a 2D6 charge from a nine away if something's near the board edge. Um, you can also use it with the Gore Wardens deploy off the table at the beginning of the game with unit of knights. Wait for this to cast, then drop him and go, actually, now his knights are going to be a lot closer. Um, it, the only problem I don't like having here is off the table is they don't um, cast spells, they can't do heroic actions, they're not generating points. So it's like, uh, I don't know. Like, it's okay. It's an option. It really depends what you're playing against. Some opponents, and you can remind them and say, oh, these are off the table. They can come down. And most people bring them on turn two. But I, I think sometimes it's better waiting because, um, I mean, the good thing about the Gore Warden is later in the game, he can then redeploy again. So they're really good at attacking something on extreme flank. And then he can cast his spell and teleport back again. Which is why I quite like the Gore Warden for that, but it's a spell. If it was like an ability or, or something, it'd be a bit more reliable. But um, that's why I think you need the Antorian Acolyte um, formation. So, yeah, I think the Arch Regent's great. I, I would take him. Now, the next one, Vargulf. And yeah, this is because you need to have some unit healing. Um, and honestly, the only way you're going to get points is being in the throne, um, killing stuff or doing wounds, basically in combat, or casting and dispelling. Now, courtiers are not priests and they're not wizards. Now, that's why I've taken the artifact to make my Vargulf a priest, which gives me access to the prayer, which is the unholy vitality five-up ward that works on a three-up you can't stop, because that is huge for sustain. So whether you put that on the terror guys before he goes out from his uh, his little pocket, think of him like the, you've got like the quarterback, you've got like the offensive line protecting him. Once he gets his buff, he can fly out. You know, he's had his block. He's going out. He's doing his job. Um, I think the Vargulf as well has got a two inch reach, so he can kind of attack. And he's quite a small base. It's an oval, so it's quite easy to get him in places. Um, he can attack. And do quite a bit of damage, which means he generates points. And those points can be used to heal. And then he can also use those points to summon but I, or, or, or trigger Fiend Frenzy. So he's basically hangs around the Crypt Horrors. He's like, he's just, he's just chilling with them. Now, um, you can also get plus two attacks against other units if you want. Um, and he can fly when he moves. So you can move over stuff quite easy and then he does heal himself as well um when he hurts stuff so he's got great sustain at eight wounds four up save he, he can be protected i believe he can be protected by the crypt guard he's got eight wounds i can't remember what the cap is for if they have anything it's just hero so yeah so he can have a five up ward if he's within um three inches of the crypt guard um and also um yeah, that, that's pretty good. So the Crypt Guard can give him an extra ward. The Crypt Guard really are there as well. They've got that ability that if they do a wound, you can't have a command ability, so they can be used like that. 
Um, I think they've got a two-inch reach as well. Uh, yes, they do. Um, and what's good about those is, um, yeah, if any wounds by this unit allocated to an enemy unit, that unit cannot issue or receive commands. So only really an effect, um, inspiring presence, but it just give them a little thing. I mean, they're not terrible. Freeze two attacks, freeze, freeze, ren one, one damage. But really, what they're in there for is character protection, and on top of that they're there for the battle tactic because the battle tactic um, you need to have, and I believe these are my little notes. So obviously not, not quite the, um, the, the, the book itself. Um, I've actually lent my book to a friend now that the embargo is gone. So I don't have it with me anymore. Um, I will talk about spells as well, which is something. So, um, You've got this um, ties of chivalry. I have um, one nut surf, one knight, one courtier. Well, the Vargulf, the Crypt Horrors, and the uh, Crypt Guard, that's your three. They're going to be together anyway. They're going to be protecting each other. That's that's what you need on the, on the objective. So that's the formation. You've got Lance, two or more knight units make a charge. You need to get a seven, but you've got four night units, so that's doable. You've got um, Glorious Feast. Obviously, that's doable if you've got a guy with six deeds, which should be fairly easy. Um, again, this one's doable. Um, you've got a monster that's destroyed by an abhorrent. Obviously, you've got the Terrorgeist. That's an abhorrent, so you can go in and kill a monster with that. And you've got Scream to Death. So this is why I quite like the... Um, Terror guys, because it does open some battle tactics up. If you take the Zoran, um, you're gonna have to start using like your Arch Regent or something to try and get that off, or taking Crypt Flayers. Um, in terms of Grand Strat, you could go with one of these. Um, so Defend the Throne, I think, is probably the best one. But obviously, there are other ones in the handbook which I think are a lot easier. I think there's one where you've got to have a wizard near the center. That's, that's fairly easy. Most of your characters are wizards. You're going to be blobbing around the middle, basically. And I'll talk about the play of this army in a minute. But um, So the Vargulf, that's why he's there. He's there as your sustain for your um, crypt uh, horrors. And he's also there to do damage. Um, now, you might be thinking, why not take a Crypt Horn to Courtier? I don't really think he's worth taking. Um, he's He hits really hard, if he hits, on a four up. And, you know, freeze to wound, rend two, damage through with five attacks. So he hits really hard. But he doesn't really add a lot to the army. Um, you could, you know, if you were going into this a bit more, you could do like, oh, I'm not going to take the Gore Warden because I don't, I don't think he fits. That opens up not taking Mr. General, which allow you have to sort your battle line out, but you could then say, actually, I'm going to take two units of six Crypt Horrors. I need a Ghouls as a screen, and you're going to take the Crypt Haunter because you want more courtiers because you want to do more healing. Um, you, you could do that. It, it, it's, it's not terrible. Like I just, It's just, I don't think there's a right or wrong, really. I just really like the Morbeg Knights. I think they're cool, um, and I really want to, play with lots of them so that's why they're there um and i like the options the gore warden gives you with the teleporting around the table putting stuff off the board just a, just a just a head game with your opponent you have to worry about you know any point in the game you could redeploy your guy nine away with a spell you cast the spell sometimes you probably not even care if you get it off you just cast it and they're thinking wait to the end and go i'm going to cast it they're going to save their dispel for that and they're going to go oh, yeah 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 you get your other spells off and then you go yeah cool and then they go oh you're going to cast that spell and you're like yeah they are, oh, I've unbound it, you're cool, I didn't, I didn't care. But they have to think about it because do they want stuff dropping nine away, then they risk the charge with a reroll if you get the charge off, then it's like it could be big, you know. So that's why I like stuff like that. It's just a little bit of a disruption, a little bit of a mind game you can play. Um, so because of this, my goal warden has to be the general. So I think... You could take different things. So I've got battle lusters, reroll charges. So you could, these are generic ones, by the way. So you could just basically do it and go, well, I'm going to reroll. Um, Master and magic's very good. Reroll, cast, and unbind. And then obviously the cast is quite important. So if you want to get that spell off and you want to do that stuff, then rerolling is great. You could take the shadowy obfuscation, which is the you can't shoot me unless you're in 12. 
I don't think you need to worry about that because he gets look out, sir. You've got the you've got other ways to protect him. Um and feverish scholar, which I believe, let me try and remember what this one does. Um I want to say it's something to do with giving him an extra spell um or a plus oh, I think it's a plus one. And then if he's got six points, he gets plus two. I believe that's right. Let me have a quick look. Um, do, 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 do. Yeah, pass one to cast and bind a spell if you have it in two. So you could take Feverish Scholar, but I think by the time that you get in that plus one to cast, yeah, it's useful. I mean, it, it, plus one to cast is great. Plus one to unbind is great. Um, I think it's better on Arch Regent. If, you, if you're if you going to move away from him being your general, and I took an Arch Regent general, I would do that because he gets two spells. You're getting double two unbinds. It's going to be a lot better. Um, you could take that as well because you're going to be in that throne. Um, so I think, you know, that's a good candidate to be in the throne. Um, I don't think you put the Vargulf in the throne. Let me have a quick look. Because um, it says it can be... Yeah, up to seven. So the Vargulf can't go in the throne. So it's just like whether or not you could you could bump the Vargulf's points without fighting and then dump him out. Um, but I think you could do it with a heroic action. So you could do a heroic action and a prayer, try and get him towards six, but also it gives you a couple of points to put a Crypt Horror back in the unit. Um, obviously, the Arch Regent does that as well. So you probably find the Arch Regent would be sat in the throne. Um, it, it's quite hard to get rid of. Um, honestly um, so yeah that works well I think um, yeah so that's the list really and then I've got in there the barricade and the chalice for more sustain now the chalice is great because basically it allows you to um, heal off of what you kill um, you know and let's go and look at that one because we like it uh, oh they're on the same page isn't that great so um you've got the chalice which you know it says that um number of models slain within 12 um at the end of each turn roll dice for each model that was slain uh on a four up the commanding player may heal one allocated to fleshy court model within 12 um or return one to official that has a wound goes to one that's hollow within 12. now this spell sounds great but you've got to kill models so it does work when your models die it's probably better if you're playing with lots of ghoul, like a ghoul screen and then they kill the ghouls, you power up the chalice, you use that to heal your monsters. I don't, you know, I think it's good when you've got like a Sauron. Um, I don't think it's necessary in this list. This could be anything else. You could just swap this out, whatever you wanted. It doesn't really matter. Any endless spell. I just had like 70, 100 points left over or 90 points. There's nothing I can buy for 90 points. Um, so I thought, well, I'll take Barricade, I'll take the Chalice, because it's cool. But you could take something else. Now, I I don't, you know, whatever end the spell floats your boat. It could be, you know, anything. Geminids could be Bridge. I don't even know why you'd want Bridge, but you could take Bridge. <laughs> you know, whatever. Um, then you've got um, the Cadaverous Barricade, which I think is great. So this one is amazing. So it just basically means that um, enemies units within three inches cannot run or retreat, which is pretty big. Uh, also, it says enemy models start a move within three, half their movement. So it's just great because I, I like the fact you can just fence people in by stopping them retreating. So it stops people moving out of combat with you, which can be annoying. You know, honestly, then the na they know they're going next and they get they double turn you, then they rally. So it's just nice to stop them doing that so they can't retreat. Some of them have retreat and charge. I think for the cost, 20 points is too good not to not to have as an option. And sometimes you won't even cast it, but it's just good. There's something you could do. Um, you could take Corpse Mare. I don't really like Corpse Mare, but it's up to you. I'm not all I'm saying is you've got some points for some endless spells. Take what you want. Um, in terms of the the knights and why have I gone for lots of knights now? These chaps, I think, are oh well, this is about the crypt horrors. So the crypt horrors, pretty unassuming. They hit on a four. Um, they do get a heal, and they've got an improvement on rend. Um, 
if they're hovering six of a courtier, so probably will be if you've got your Vargulf nearby, or 18 of an abhorrent, which is more than likely. Um, and it says if the unmodified wound roll for uh, a club and septic talents is a six, that has damage of three. So they get a bit of rend, they get a bit of thing. I think they're good. They're a good buff candidate. I think you've got your, I would take, in terms of spells, you've obviously got the transformation, um, which I believe is um, pretty pretty good that's the um the da, 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 um add two to the move two to wound rolls if i'm um, one to wound roll sorry so uh so yeah um and if it's cast on a 10 you can pick three so plus one to wound it, you know i mean they don't have that help their hit but you know it's good i'm sure there's you can use the plus one to hit prayer uh, well, not prayer, not prayer. Off of Gormain, if you if you want to get that bonus, obviously you could do all that attack as well. So um, as long as you're not being roared, which is always the the fun. Um, I'm not sure there's another way to buff it. The Arch Regent does that. He doesn't give you anything. Um, Gore Warden doesn't give you anything. Um, uh, he doesn't give you anything. Yeah, so it's the only way you're going to be able to buff for that. Now, the more bag knights, I think these are cool, 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 cool. I like how fast they are. I like the fact they fly. Um, I like the fact they got a two-inch reach. And they got ren, they got damage. They can retreat and still charge, which is fantastic. Um, then they do more wounds on the charge. So that gives you more wounds. That's why I just think this unit's great. Um, they also get... Um, uh, they get extra capture power if they've charged, but really they get plus one to run and charge rolls with a horn blower. So that's an eight you need if you get the spell off um, from the arch region. Then that's going to be minimum seven with a reroll, which is average. Um, if you run a one on that extra d6, um, so yeah, I really like those. Um, the crypt guard again, they're optional. I think accessing the battle tactic like 10 crypt guard could be 20 ghouls it's 160 points for 20 ghouls um and i don't think ghouls are bad um the only reason i took the crypt guard is because newer models they come in the set but also um i like the hero protection but again you could just take a unit of 20 ghouls like and actually one of the units so if you were like, oh, I just feel like I'm getting overwhelmed. I don't have enough to screen. I'm losing. St you could literally just take one of these Morbeg Knight units and make that 20 ghouls. And then this Crypt Guard, you could keep them in or you could swap them to, we could, well, you could swap them, keep them in and they could be behind the ghouls. And suddenly you've got this ghoul blob as well, which is fairly pokey and fairly kind of, you know, survivable. That makes the chalice a little bit more useful. Um, but like I say, it's, it's entirely up to you. So this is kind of where... I would be leaning to start. Um, I think the list will really come into its own when you really like um, double down on something. Like you go, right, I've got this combo. My whole army is going to be about this unit. Or I'm going to just really, I'm just going to spam these. I'm going to have as many as I can. Um, and I think that's fine. But then I think what you're doing is you're opening yourself up to points adjustments and FAQs. So I think for now, like more bag knights are a little bit under costed. You might even see crypt horrors go up because they are cheap. But I don't think it's because they're that good. I just think because you they're gonna be the unit you put in for some meaty wounds um that you want in the middle of your army. So um yeah, I I, I don't know. But I would say be wary of just spam. Um Crypt Flayers, again, you could take a unit of six Crypt Flayers. You know, two, drop the two units of Knights, that's six Crypt Flayers. The ten Crypt Guard could be a unit of Knights. You know, you, the, you could go Blister Skin if you want more Priests. Um, you know, opens up some options. It's just, it's entirely up to you. And I think that's the nice thing about the book, is it's very well rounded that you can dip and dive, swap one thing out for another thing. They have similar roles. Um, and I like the fact you can build, I think probably the most versatile model is probably the um, Terrorgeist. 
Um, I do really like the Vargulf on reflection. I think if you were playing a low point game as well, like I think there's a command trait that gives you like plus two wounds. Um, the Vargulf could be pretty horrific in a low point game. It would rip stuff to bits. Um, and you can protect it very well because it is a little base. So you can wrap it in, you know, your Crypt Horrors, which are basically a big meat shield. Um, I love Crypt Horrors. I think they're great. I mean, I'm, I mean, I'd be tempted to take two units of six here. You know, like it's, they are a lot cheaper when you start multiplying them up. Um, they do struggle with the damage output. I like the more big knights for the mortal wounds, which is why I felt like I could not rely on the bites on the terror guys too much or the scream. So I could, I could go into resilience of a monster and I want to keep the raw. I want to keep the, the kind of the, the, the movement and the gore warden helps me with that. So anyway, so that's the list that I would probably start with. Um, if you've got a list that you've come up with that you think is cool, put it in the comments below. I'm always interested to see what other people are doing. Um, if you've got some insight into what I'm doing and you think, Oh, I don't really rate that or you should do this instead or whatever. Again, like just, just ping me, let me know. It's interesting to see what other people's thoughts are. I would like to play a couple games with this and that will kind of hone my thinking. A lot of it will be meta dependent or what I'm trying to do. If I'm playing in a team event, it'll be completely different because you can really skew the army because you can avoid certain things. Um, I'm trying to make an all rounder list a bit of everything it's got a bit of it's got a monster it's got some infantry it's got you know it's got a bit of shooting it's got some mortal wounds it's got some redeployment it's got a priest it's got a wizard i like i like to try and have a bit of everything it does kind of make the army a little bit watered down when you play against other extreme builds um i don't know how good this list would be um i think azoran would be pretty pretty good to try out as well so i do want to try him out um, but I don't know if I could let go of my terror guys, so I might have to try and find 460 points elsewhere, which is quite a hefty amount of points. I mean, you could drop the Vargolf, but then you haven't got an arch, you know, you'd probably end up having to drop, you know, the Gore Warden and for two units of something. You know, you could drop some points here, but you're not really doing much with the spare points if you want to keep the terror guys, and I think the terror guys is pretty good. Um, I think the combination of the two would be quite strong. Um, but yeah, let me know if you've got an Azor on this with a Terror Guys. Put it in the chat. I would be interested to see it. But uh, thanks for watching. Hopefully you found this informative. Um, and I really hope to catch you all in the next video. Uh, like and subscribe and all that algorithm stuff if you want to keep up to date with it. And uh, yeah, catch you all in the next one. Thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you soon. Have a good day.